Good evening. It's 6 30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Randy Iser. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm here on behalf of Paul Naris, Exotic Auto. A couple of items. One item is the sign, and another, the other item is location of some cocaine tanks. Mr. Dwyer, you cannot participate. Is that correct? Okay. So this is the revised, a revised site plan that I did this afternoon. What it does is there was a provision for a sign in the green space that's been taken away. Uh, Going to be signed on the building, and I got to talk, uh, talk to you about that. But just for now, the sign is gone from the green space. And then he wants to add these propane tanks were not part of the original uh, site plan approval. That's basically a gravel pad with, I think he's got 400 gallons. Oh, the, so those are 100, those like 100 gallons? Yeah. Tanks? Okay. Yeah. And his big issue or concern is that there are, there's two arborvitaes right here, and then there's a whole row of arborvitaes here. What he wants to do is take out the arborvitaes and put up a six foot stockade fence to enclose the propane he feels that's more secure than the bushes. How, those, are the, those are fairly tall arborvitae in back. They're, I'm guessing, six or eight feet right now. Could he just put the stockade fence inside of the arborvitae? I'm not sure what he's got for space. Um, the arborvitaes are inside the line. And what are we at here? One inch equals 20. So, 20 feet. not quite, maybe 15. There probably would be enough room to do that. I mean, these two are going to have to come out. Yeah, you're going to get access to it. We have to have right. access. So, but we kind of like to keep the, okay. the back side if we could. All right, I will ask him if that can be done, if, they'll, if that'll provide him enough space. I mean, I guess if push comes to shove, he'll have to. Uh, butcher the back side of the yeah. the bushes and leave the the front side that yeah. face the neighbors as um, is. So really, just well, well, you don't need our permission to get rid of the sign. I'm just telling you. Okay. I just wanted to to revise the plan to show you that there was a sign okay. previously approved for in here, and I we're doing away with it. Okay. Because he doesn't want it. Uh, number one, it's probably going to be in a place that will. If it's not there, it'll help people coming down Cummins Road to see what's coming on River Drive, quite so frankly. He calls it a green space. It's basically it's a bunch of rocks. Well, there's, there's, he's got a, an island. So right now it's stone around it, and he's, there's loam inside of it. He's going to plant stuff in there. Looks a whole lot better than it did used to. Yeah. Like that. yeah, the we, building definitely does. We call it green space, but technically it's open space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what the bylaw requires, right. open to the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can just find out if you can just put the stockade fence inside that. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think we have a problem with taking that off for access. Okay. All right. I will ask him that. Um, so the second item is the sign. On the building? On the building. But I don't know if we can do this or not. But we're going to find out. That's just a proposal from the sign maker. So there are pictures with, with the sign on the building. There are, they would like two signs, one on the front and one on the side. So one facing River Drive, one facing Cummins Road. 16, this would be eight. Each one's going to be like 12 square feet. No, this front one is... Eighteen got, by eight. Yeah, you know, it's right here. Eight. You know, that's the side. Eighteen inches by eight. So that's twelve. And the front one is two. Two point eight by fourteen is forty. So, is that allowed? I, I believe. I have the bylaw right here. Okay. So it says forty. Yeah. Maximum of forty square feet. 
on the building is that per face or total 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 square feet so see the he's on Limited to the local because he's going to have to divide the 40 square feet between the two signs. And we can't gain anything by taking away the street sign. But the law doesn't, or the bylaw doesn't allow for that. All right, that's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. And then the the basic design is okay. It's basically what he's got down on Route Nine. Yeah, I, I don't colors think, are the same. I don't think we have a problem with the appearance of the no. sign. No. Okay, yeah. so how do we want to work this? Do you want me to? I'll, I'm, obviously, I'm going to talk to him. Do you want me to talk to him you, and come back? You, or do you yeah, you've got, you've got like four, one, two, at least three issues here. Why don't you talk to him and find out about this and make sure that he's okay with that, and then come back in two weeks. Okay. And then we can just vote on that. And, um, okay. In case he changes his mind about the street sign, when he finds out he can't have that, that many. Okay, and then I had a question regarding the bylaw. Where is it? Sign? The, the sign bylaw, and I've got to find it. Uh, all right, here. Single tenant properties. Up to four wall signs are permitted per business establishment. I don't understand how that can be. What do you mean, four wall signs? Four wall signs. If I'm if I'm a single tenant property, yes, I can have four signs. How four signs on the building, not to exceed the total square footage allowed of sixty-four or forty square so, feet. So okay, so so you, you could have two signs on the front on on the front if you wanted. Two okay. signs on the front, two and signs on the side, the or one on, on, you know, however you want, however you want to divide up to the four signs around the building. Okay. Because sometimes, especially with the malls, they want them on three sides. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just was wanted a clarification on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I need. And okay. You don't want any of this stuff. No, because you're going to come back with okay. revisions and stuff. Yeah. <coughs> You want any of that, Mike? No. That's it? That's it. Well, you're easy tonight. Tonight? Some, some night I'll make up for it. <laughs> you have. You have in the past. Last time you were here, you had them. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Michael Petron from VHB. <clears throat> well, I put that on the side so we don't block the audience and even the TV can see it. Hi, Michael Petron with VHB, here representing the town of Hadley. The OPM asked me to come and present some hopefully minor modifications to the site plan for your supplementary condition number one. With the approval, any change, please come back before the board. Okay. Um, this is right, for the senior center? This is for, I'm sorry, this is for the, yes, Hadley Senior Center. Right. Um, there are four changes primarily. Let's start with some of the easier ones. Um, we had proposed a tapping sleeve and valve for the tie-in here. Um, the, the DPW came back and uh, uh, wanted a uh, new tee rather than a tap, um, just due to the age of the main. So a tapping sleeve. Unfortunately, that has already been done. Uh, okay. Tapping sleeve and valve yeah. was installed. I, okay. I'm sorry, was omitted and a, and a tee was cut in to, to the water main here. Okay. So that's one change that we're requesting. Second change is um, reducing this walkway here to a four foot length or width at its minimum. What was it originally? Six. Okay. Um, Which one reason was looking down? Which one? This is on the north side. We had a two to one slope to a swale, <coughs> to the high point here, to, to an area drain that kind of bled things out. Two to one, it's, it's pretty steep. If we can reduce that and actually uh, lessen that slope, we prefer to. Gives, gives the contractor a little more room to work back there. So. Does it accommodate a wheelchair? If yes. Four feet wide? Four feet meets ADA, yes. Okay. Makes it one way. One way. Just planning ahead here. But that's that's one change that we would be requesting. Okay. Um, the second change is under the original design, um, we didn't have these, these bollards here. We actually had a, a, a wheelchair ramp that ramped up and a curb, and then it ramped back down. Um, our design, unfortunately, in this area didn't work. 
Um, reason being is that as you're level here, you can't ramp up six inches because you're going to be above the first floor. Okay. So, so that's that's a design error on, on our side. Um, we presented several options to the um, to the senior center com committee. Um, they elected to remove the curb and install some additional boulders in that area. So these, just this all be flush, flush mounted. These changes have been approved by the board of selectmen. Uh, they have not as yet. Either one of those. They have not. Which one? The, has the sidewalk been approved by them? I don't know. I don't know. That these, these are recent changes. That okay, so the up. ramp has not been approved by the board. I, I don't believe that it has. Okay. But I, I don't know for certain. You need to find out because as this planning board, if the, if the board of selectmen has not approved <coughs> it, my opinion, neither are we. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the next change, or the final change, is actually to this location here. Um, there are some existing trees all throughout this area here. Um, the design had a retaining wall that stopped here. Um, as, as the excavation started, um, the root balls were becoming pretty apparent, you know, as to, as to where they were and the extent. Um, the abutting property owner here really wanted to keep those trees. Uh, the senior center decided to be good neighbors. Let's try to keep the trees as, as best as possible. The retaining wall got a little bit longer here, about 40 feet, got a little bit higher by about a foot. Um, so we weren't cutting into that slope so much, so we could maintain those. those I slopes. know that hasn't been approved by the select one yet. So, well, um, can, excuse, as, excuse me, why yeah. can't we approve something subject to other board's approvals? I thought that's what we've been talking about. Because this is a little bit different. This, this, is, this is getting into some uh, errors and omissions problems that I won't vote oh, for okay. until the board of selection. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. 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 This is you know gotcha. it was gotcha. it was a simple change order. Yeah, one gotcha. thing, but this yeah. is the concern this of the is, this errors is cost and omissions. Overruns and you stuff know, like that. we don't want to get into yeah. that ballpark. Gotcha. We just want to either they approve gotcha. it and we don't. We don't, I don't want to play politics I'm, I'm here. here. I'm we understand, the and we're not going to we're not beating you. you up either. Okay. Go. So the wall got a little bit higher. Yeah. Got a little bit longer to accommodate to to try to maintain the the health of the trees. Okay. Um. Because it, it got higher, it exceeded the uh, minimum fall safety you know, standard, so we have to add a, a four-foot fence okay. on top of it. Um, there was also a parking space that was here, which was somewhat close to the tree. It could still be constructed. However, we'd be digging into that root ball. Um, that's, that's a larger tree that, that the owner definitely wanted to keep. So we'd be looking at eliminating that parking space. You know that the parking was a concern out here. We looked yeah. at what that did to the overall numbers and we basically meet the minimum required yeah. still on site. I'm, I'm not going to be concerned about one parking space. Okay, so um, those are the changes that, so I think those will be the, the final changes okay. to, to this. Okay. And, and, you know, we're not against the change, we just want to make, we want to make sure that everything is done prior to us because of the potential issues that are involved in this. So. Um, so but as a citizen, I'm curious, are these changes costing more money? Um, yes, the, they the, are. The, 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 yes, of course, a, a retaining wall, yes, would cost more money and some additional bollocks would cost money. And so why weren't these included in the original plan? The, well, the, the, the trees are our field condition. We don't know where the roots are until things start being dug up. That's an unknown, unknown condition. With the retaining wall? No. That wasn't the, included the, in the original Well, the, the height of it, it could still be built the way it was planned. Um, but we would be damaging the trees. So, in this case, this could all be built per point. So, so you couldn't foresee. You couldn't this, foresee. This, you this, couldn't this, foresee this yeah. problem. I, I think the select committee is supposed to be voting on this tomorrow night again. If they were supposed to talk to town we're, council. We're, yeah, we're meeting with the uh, select. Yeah. So right. we'll be here again in two weeks. I mean, none of this is going to hold the project up. Uh, Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, I know I it's, it's tight and they're looking to get this stuff done. So, so um, I thought know. they're going to talk to town council about these. They issues. are. Well, that, that's, that's, that's for them. They're, they're, they're hoping to be, have that done and talk to get so on tour. I, I can't speak to the cost overruns. I'm not. Right. And, uh, yeah, that, and we're not asking you. That's, you know, that's, there's. These, so. these are I think the what, site changes what, that have been made. What we can say is I don't see that there is any site issues or zoning issues that right. are impacted yeah. Yeah, just here. A matter, just, just a matter of approving changes of the drawings. So the Board of Selectmen, however they decide to proceed, if it's approved, if it's whoever pays for it, I mean, like that's all not our, our way out of our jurisdiction. Um, 
come back to us that it's that they have approved it, however that means, and you know, we'll certainly approve the changes. There's no problem with that. So for your record too, I have a list of the changes that I just described okay. in the letter. All right. Thank you. And then I've got a set of, of these revised drawings also. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And should I come back and present? Yeah, in two, in two just weeks. to make sure you get the everything, the base is covered in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. be clear. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or three weeks. Yeah. be the first. Oh, three weeks. It's yeah. five, five Tuesday month. Any other questions from the board on this? No. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And there's no way that you guys could approve it conditionally yeah. based it, on? We, we, like he said, we could approve it conditionally, <coughs> but because of the politics involved and all the things with the change orders and who's going to pay for it, I feel uneasy trying to say, you know, because it's been used against us in the past, but the planning board's already approved this. Well, and, and <clears throat> that's my opinion, but the, if the board wants I, to make well, a vote. I, I agree with you, Jimmy. I think, uh, you know, there, there's just too, let's find out too much politics. No, the, the, I, under, yeah. I understand there's a lot yeah. of politics going on here. The, the only concern is, is that if it's not approved by, by you guys, obviously it can't be built until it's approved by the selectmen. Right. Anyways, nonetheless, um, I three weeks pushes us almost well it pushes us into november um paving is scheduled yep. very very shortly yep. well that's why i said i don't i don't see any zoning issues with this right so i think however the select board acts on it we would probably i don't see any reason why we would not go along with okay. what the select so board does if, if they decided to, to go ahead and begin making some of these changes so they can keep on schedule that wouldn't if the board of selectmen approves it, you could come back to us and say, "Okay, the board of selectmen has approved this. We, we've already done this and this. I don't see it's going to be. A, I don't think it's going to be a problem from my Excellent. point of view." Okay. I, I just, I just hope the select board you know, realizes it? that Collier's has some deep pockets, and we've had enough cost overruns and mistakes made on this project, and they should be paying for this problem, not you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. Thank you. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Do you have anything to talk about? I see. You're, are you just here for the public hearing? Okay. I know you. I've got some. If I could. I, mean, I don't see no. I don't see no. I know I got here late. I can't believe that. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you got? Okay. So this is uh, three Hillside Drive. Let me give you each a, a packet. Um, it's the Potter property. Andrew and Jacqueline. And uh, Jocelyn, I'm sorry. Um, so this is lot nine on the plan that you have in front of you. What we're, what, I'm ultimately, what we're ultimately going to do is go to the uh, select board and ask them if it's okay to modify uh, an existing easement. So um, this lot nine you'll see at the, let's see what, westerly end of it has a detention basin. There you are. So it takes up a majority of the land. Uh, Andrew is looking to do some improvements on his property. Uh, this drainage easement was as a result of a drainage basin that the board required back in 1988 and then subsequently if you look at the letter the next uh, document that's in your packet uh, there was a letter supplied by a professional engineer on behalf of Tom Quinlan who was the original developer of the subdivision where they asked to instead of having this big drainage basin in the backyard if they could just connect a couple of pipes and ultimately and that was in 1997, uh, the board said, yes, you can connect those pipes. Um, and so you uh, allowed an amended um, right. an and, amendment. To the and, an interesting right? comment on this. Yes. I am not in favor of this because when those pipes were connected and we didn't realize it, that drainage basin that we allowed them to remove no longer held water and all the water from this subdivision now runs directly down Mount Warner Road and onto the Solowski property and floods the Solowski property okay. and makes a mess where he no used to not have a mess. So I'm going okay. to be talking to the Board of Selectmen about something to be done. So no, I'm not in favor of reducing this easement. So interesting. So what we were looking to do, so you can maybe see the end of it, if you go to the last two pages, you've got the existing conditions that are shown on um, the same thing as lot nine, and then the final page is what we would propose to be the revised easement area. So we're not looking to change the location of the pipes, 
we would just be looking to change the easement area. So you see the comparison between the two of them. So the right. drainage isn't going to change. Right. The drainage isn't going drainage, to change. Drainage isn't, isn't going to change. Correct. What I'm saying is not connecting the pipes and reusing the, dr the, the, back to the, the pond, going back to what it used to be. Okay? Because a system, yeah, we allowed it to be done, and to be honest with you, we kind of had the wool pulled over our eyes. Okay. And um, I know the Solowskis have complained to me about the water that runs down off of Hillside and onto their property because this town does not have an easement to run the water on the Solowski property. They okay. did that many years ago and just floods their property. Okay. And it's been making a mess there. Where do we think it's coming from? Down? It, it got significant. Hillside and just. It, 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 where's north on here? This is north? No. Wait a minute. Oh, this is that way. North is. That's the. This is. This north is up. This way. North is, north is this way. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the water runs down here. Yep. There's a swale or a pipe that runs along Mount Warner Road and it empties onto the Solowski property. Mm -hmm. And. Tomorrow would be a good good day when it's raining. It's supposed to be pouring tomorrow afternoon mm -hmm. to go and see the damage and the, how the flooding it occurs it on the Solowski property. Okay. So no, I'm not going to allow. I'm not. I am not going to vote in favor of this easement change. Okay. Okay. Mr. Solowski has come to me and asked me if I could do something yeah. about it, and I'm intending to go to the board of selectmen. This is. You, you stepped into the perfect. Can you believe it? This is you a wonderful night for me. Perfectly. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, you know, okay. I, I don't mean to be yeah, no, to this person, but the problem is, like I said, the uh, this this by, pipe bypass yeah. out of the detention area has been causing some problems to Solowski. Okay. Solowski. What, what's this structure here? Is this a retaining wall? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. That used yes. to be. That used to be a uh, like a a detention pond. There used to be a chain around it and yes. that has been removed and right. stuff. 1997 I think they went through, they gave you the letter and then it was amended and so they brought it to, mm -hmm. to law yeah. um, from what it was. So it's the current owner of the lot who is asking Correct. to have the easement modified. Correct. Because they want to do something with it. Correct and not be in the easement. Yeah. We've got Dave, the town to put some riprap on it right right at the, the entrance where the where this, the uh, drainage pipe goes on to his property. Okay. okay, that's that's fine. It prevents erosion right at the beginning, but then the water just basically floods his uh, his fields out there. There's you know, and a good rain, it's a good flood. And is it is it coming from? I mean. Here, I'm just trying to figure out where it's coming from because if it's coming down here, then it seems like an ineffective well, catch there, basin. There's, there's, a, there's a few things here. Okay. Um, like I said, there's a town drainage system, right? And there's the hillside, right? He said it got worse when hillside got rid of the detention pond. Okay. Um, it's always been putting water from Mount Warner and what else, the other street over here, Breckenridge, yep. onto his property. Okay. Um, well, he said it got it got worse. When this was reduced, um, you know, 20 or so years ago. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know that for a fact. Okay. But I do know that there is a definite water flowing issue onto his property. Okay. So then maybe before we ask for anything from you know you and or the uh, select board, maybe we try to investigate that a little bit more yes. to see if because part of it is if if there's nothing that's going to change on his property. As a result, and I don't know that the, the modification is bad, if there's a drainage issue otherwise, then I, I mean, I think we can try to figure out if there's a solution. Okay. Okay. That's good feedback. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay. A couple of pieces of general information. Obviously, the town meeting has been moved back to November 7th because of something to do with the finances and financials of uh, verifying free cash. Um, let's see, the, uh, there's a public forum on the 24th about the uh, town meeting articles in Hopkins. Um, 
1023, which is next Wednesday at 5 p.m. There is a groundbreaking for the new fire station in North Hadley. A couple of elections. 3320 is the federal primary for the town. And 41420, it will be the town elections for the town. Those were all covered up in our last, uh, um, what you call it, uh, meeting with David and our town department heads that I happened to go to. Um, let's see. I have nothing else for general information. Do you have anything, Bill? Uh, probably have something. Maybe we should just make a comment for the audience. Because the meeting was advertised for 715, we can't start it before 715. Yeah, so we're going to wait. So um, we just have to uh, sit and Bill do a song and dance for 20 minutes. Then <laughs> <laughs> everybody will leave. Yeah, that would uh, that'd be pretty, pretty gruesome. Let me see what I have in here. The gentleman who just presented didn't mention his name. That oh, that's, that's because you all know we him. We know that's uh, Sorry, Tom Reedy. Tom Reedy Sorry, with uh, Bacon, Bacon Wilson. Wilson. He represents, um, he represents, very, very, you know, Pete McConnell used to be a very frequent flyer for Bacon Wilson with, with different kind of issues. And since he's kind of semi-retired, yeah, you could say that. A little more than that. I, I saw him today. So that oh, was okay. Maybe so, once a month. But Tom has kind of taken over where Pete used to do stuff. I mean, you'll see others from, from Bacon Wilson, but you'll, Tom will be a frequent flyer here. Okay. Maybe uh, you want Ken to fill us in on the oh. extra meeting he's requesting? Yeah. Okay. And we got the email about you want to have one more meeting? So, um, as the board knows, we're, um, we have a public hearing on this item. Uh, we're working on the MS4 um, bylaw um, that is on your warrant, and um, with that, it needs to be paired with rules and regulations, which kind of it, um, are the requirements of the applications, the requirements of inspections and what that procedure would look like. And um, in speaking with my colleague who has been working with the working group, um, this is specific to, uh, at the last meeting, the DPW director not being there to answer a couple of questions. Um, this is to finalize those rules and regulations and um, also and also provide some comments on uh, some of the things that she has learned in regards to the the EPA and the um, DEP and some of the the um, infighting that's happening in regards to the MS4 permit um, and whether or not um, those two things will be realized before the July 1st deadline that towns and municipalities need to be in compliance with the MS4 permit. Um, so. This is a request for a meeting, understanding that your town meeting is, is um, November 7th, you know, having the planning board adopt the rules and regulations at a regular, regularly scheduled meeting shortly thereafter is, is kind of, I think, the plan for the rules and regs. And okay. having a meeting prior to that, just to um, finalize what, what the rules and regulations would look like, um, would be beneficial. Okay. Oh, is the infighting over jurisdiction? Jurisdiction and the requirements of the Wetlands Protection Act um, and what the MS4 permit is trying to accomplish. So, so is the MS4 trying to exceed the requirements of those federal standards? Well, not necessarily. I think it's more in trying to have developers, when they come to towns with these MS4 permits, that they're not having to do two separate standards. So having it aligned um, has been a challenge for um, both parties to come you know, together. Um, and so I think we'll be hearing as the, when the new year begins 
what conversations have happened. Um, but I think my colleague Patty uh, Gambarini wanted to share that with the with the working group, um, as well as finalize the with DPW having DPW present um, because of the, as as the board knows, the majority of the requirements do require DPW to do the inspections and. Um, be more at the table in regards to compliance. So um, it would be helpful to have that meeting with your DPW. Yeah, well, I, when I, I'll, I'll give the, Chris the different dates that are possible. Okay. And I will make sure that he does attend to let him know that it's an important one because it really involves a lot of what he's, his yeah. department needs to be doing. Yes. Um, so, I mean, in that email that I sent um, before I left the office today, um, it did include him. So, hopefully, if you know, and I think yeah. hearing it from you probably would also be. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I prompt him. Yeah. Before the meeting and the side, uh, Jimmy said we want to understand this MS4 bylaw. Is that possible that we can understand it? And I'm not being funny. Can we understand it from front to back? And it it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's my job to understand it, quite frankly. No. It, no. <laughs> so the MS4, because um, the EPA has is requiring these. Um, what's the word? Um, requiring. The understanding of municipalities to uh, realize the importance of stormwater, um, they are setting these regulations that any municipalities um, that they designate as urban, um, which there are parts of town that, you know, Hadley is designated as that, um, there needs to be certain standards that need to be in place. Um, and it's specific to new development <coughs> uh, and any new redevelopment um, that now keeps stormwater in the conversation and understanding that there are certain criteria in which water um, after a big rain, um, how that's kind of. You know, you're, you're giving it to me in layman's yeah. terms. I'm saying if I read the bylaw, can I understand it? I think the developers that would be coming to the town, um, right. engineers that, you okay. know, that, and it, I think it's more specific to commercial development. Um, right. Rarely does it require a residential developer to come before the board to, you know, before uh, come to submit an MS4 permit. It's mostly for um, anything with development more than 40,000. The subdivision, they'll probably have to comply. Right. But if it's an individual homeowner, unless they're disturbing 40,000 square feet of their property. Right. How much, they, excuse me. Yep. How much leeway is there for interpretation in this bylaw? On there, the part of the developer or his representatives? Well, I think um, the bylaw sets in place um, pre pre development meetings, so they would be coming to the town, whether it's with DPW, whether it's with the building inspector, or maybe the planning board, uh, to discuss and conservation commission to discuss um, you know the plans for the development and see if there are waivers that can be. Um, so that's the, yeah. That's the, I mean that's the thing, yeah. but at the same time, gotcha. they need to get a permit from. EPA. So it's not so. as simple as 64 square feet. No, I don't think so. I know yeah. that. So but I think it's not going to, I think Ken makes a good point yeah. that it's going to be developers coming in here with sure. experienced development teams yeah. so that uh, they will understand what they have to do to comply. Yeah. And, and we, and there is a provision in there to use a consulting review engineer yeah. that they pay for on behalf sure. of the town, just like we do now with site plan approvals and others, so that we don't sit here and interpret the bylaw and all the regulations, yeah. because that is, I mean, like I said, the, the bylaw is about I don't know, eight or nine pages, and the regulations are about 34 right now. There is a lot of complexity to this item. There's no two ways around it. Um, and it's a lot of engineering. 
Yeah. Bottom line. And, you know, the civil engineering and, um, you know, Chris kind of understands his part, the DPW part, and that's the inspection part. His inspection criteria, if you would, is fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. It's the design and everything else and what they have to do to get around the stuff that's where the complexity is. The design of the development and the, and the process that all the players that need to be involved are, you know, understanding yeah. and going through. Um, setting up or fees, um, that's also part, going to be part of the yeah. discussion. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I think it's something that a lot of towns will, you'll be hearing more and more about it, I think, as the new year, as July 1st comes closer, um, on the towns racing to get there. Virtually everybody along the Pioneer Valley or the Connecticut River, this doesn't affect every town or city in the state. Mm -hmm. It affects those that contribute, or those, those that have tributaries to a federal waterway. And therefore, virtually everybody along the Connecticut River in, is included, and others that are along rivers that contribute to the Connecticut River, which in Hampshire County, Franklin County, and Berkshire County is probably three quarters of us. Shootsbury? I, I don't know off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. They've got, they've got brooks that run in. Yep. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, and then, you know, anybody along the Deerfield River and on and on and on. And it, it's, it is a very encompassing item. And I think a lot of towns aren't even sure what they have to do yet. And it's kind of tough that they're going to get, you know, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, I think um, however, well, I, I, I mean, credit where it's due is to my colleague, Patty, who is the water person in the whole Pioneer Valley. Um, she's an environmental planner, and she knows these regulations like the back of her hand. Um, so, you know, I think the way her and I are looking at this is, um, you know, this is going to be useful for, as, as I've interacted with stormwater as a town planner and um, reviewed site plans, that's something that I, I should be knowing. And so this has been helpful in the process. Are we one of the first ones to do something with this? Um, I think physically go through the process, yes. Um, I think that we work with the town of Meldrick Town, um, Patty Dick. So, um, you know. but, and, but I'll be working with another town. I think we have a meeting, kickoff no. meeting next no. week. So. so, you know, the, the, we drafted, we drafted. The PVPC has helped us or done 99% of the drafting of the bylaw. Town Council has reviewed it has said that it was pretty well, very well written, very few changes, it was a little minor edits as far as page numbers and section numbers, but nothing significant. Um, so they did a really good job with that, which thank you. And uh, they're probably, you're gonna be using this now as a template for other towns, oh, yeah, I would think, sure. because- and the, and the process has been something that I think we want to model, you know, having a member of the planning board, having a member of the conservation commission, um, DPW, building inspector, other, authorities of the yeah. town government that um, are helpful for this process. Yeah. So. Yeah. so then you know then you got the regulation stuff like that because just for everybody's information, a zoning bylaw is written with intent. If you meant this to be but you didn't say it explicitly, there's a good chance it would hold up in a court of law. And I don't want to I'm not playing lawyer, I'm just saying things from past experience. Whereas a general bylaw has to be very specific. If it doesn't say it, it doesn't count. So what could be a general a zoning bylaw of maybe three or four pages would become a general bylaw of maybe two to three times as many pages. And then regulations adopted to, to, to uh, address the bylaw is also something that makes it very complex. So, so are we adopting regulations under the general bylaw, yes. not under the zoning bylaw? Correct. Yes. Uh, just curious, I don't want to dig through Chapter 40A, but if Planning Board is adopting regulations, do we have to, we could do it at a regular meeting. Yep. Yes. Do, do we have to publish a legal notice for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it'll just be a public um, hearing, um, but once you've made your vote, it, it's adopted. Mm -hmm. um, The bylaw needs a good time. Okay. Um, 
is there were, getting back to the work program, there were a number of sections for planning board regulations that people were working on at various times. So if we're going to, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but. I mean, this is very specific to MS4. Right. Um, but to the extent there are other bylaw, other regulations mm -hmm. in the pipeline, it might save some publication costs if we could take up some other regulations. If we haven't already, there's no problem with that. I don't, and I don't remember I don't. where they stand. Okay, I'll make sure to review that, where, where you guys are um, okay. in regards to the document that I have. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good idea. Yeah, that way you can, you know. We were working on it, uh, and, and that's, if you recall, I asked you to send us some uh, old work pro uh, programs, yeah. and uh, you could probably track pretty much from there where what vintage you're looking at. Okay. But uh, I think there were some that were closer than others, and yeah. um, and we did do, uh, for example, the we adopted the historic guidelines for the village center overlay as a regulation, right? Didn't we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, okay. Yeah, if there's a if there is any economy of scale, I don't want to overcomplicate it. And MS4 is sort of taking pride of place here, so let's we'll get that done. But if there's anything else that was ready to roll but we just didn't get around to it, um, that would be probably a good thing to add on. Um, um, so, if I may, because I know you have two public hearings, if I could just share with the board. Um, I know I didn't send definitions over the, the work that we had talked about. I just really wanted to address the board by giving you a new set sure. um, with those changes. Okay. Um, and maybe at the next meeting that I'm invited to, you know, we can discuss that. Um, as well as the discussion that, um, that, that you asked me to look at parking standards. Yeah. Yeah. So I've just printed out um, something in regards to that and some food for thought. Thanks. This is the, the definition. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm going to give you a copy for uh, the show a little two minutes before we start. And then um, this is just some language. Um, for a, uh, to address off-street parking. So there were some comments that still existed from our last conversation in regards to how to treat some um, repeated definitions and um, how to address the definition for, I think it was street. Yes, yes. Structure, that's another one. Right. Um, because it appears twice, and there's multiple um, various ways to, that, they, that it's been defined. Did, uh, can you give us the, we have the definition in the electronic format yet? Yeah, yeah I, I can send that to you when, uh, tomorrow. That's fine. Oh, yeah, okay. good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Go some 715. Oh, Randy. Please. Yeah. Due to the wonders of television, my client was watching and has texted me. My phone was off. He will agree to whatever we were talking about. So the oh, fence will okay. go inside the trees. One sign on the building, the front. Only one sign? Only one sign on the building. The oh, the 40, you want to keep the 40 square foot? Yes. Okay. Um, what, what is the name of this project called? Uh, it's not exactly. Exotic Automotive Service and Sales. Exotic Automotive service and sales. Service and sales. I think it's quite an improvement to that property in North Hadley. Most definitely is. Um, the, the address? 373 River Drive. 
Is work still all at, at risk, or has that been resolved? Pardon? Yeah, yeah the, the, the lawsuit hasn't gone away yet. So the stockade fence will stay inside the existing arbor the tree line. Yes, except for the two oh, oh, right. on the north That's end of the building. And one side, 40 one square side, feet. 40 square feet on the front of the building. So I will give you a copy of the site plan. Okay, just want to make sure there's no freestanding sign. Correct. One sign on building. Yes. Know which face it will be on? It is going to be on the west face. The but I'm not going to worry about which face as long as one sign, just yeah. for one sign. Yeah. Max 40 square feet. Yeah. Stockade fence. That's on the east side. Correct. Uh, So this is coming in as an amendment to site plan approval. Can you do an amendment with three votes when site plan approval requires four? Mm. I don't know. That's you know better than I. I'm not participating. Well, out of necessity, can you participate? No. 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 no because Joe's just not here. Probably not. Well, Joseph Grodnick, he's going to be back long. Well, week and a half, he could review it in a week and a half. We've got to wait We got to wait for the votes in three weeks. Well, he can't. He's trying to open. He can open even under. Either he's going to go forward and just, yeah, everybody's going to just do it. So Not our business. Right. fast you can get the sign made anyhow, but uh, I don't know the answer to the question. Well, we may not vote on it, but clearly the sign meets the bylaw requirements. Yeah. All right, well, it needs the LE back in three weeks to Okay. Votes, but in the meantime, well, I don't. Uh, bottom line is, I don't think we're going to have a problem right, with it. Right. Okay, so at least he, he's got that. Uh, okay, yeah. so I'm just going to write to make sure I put everything down. Further amend site plan approval. No freestanding sign. No freestanding road sign. No, for, no, no freestanding sign. One sign on building max 40 square feet. Stockade fence on east side with arbor vitae on outer east side, and remove the arbor vitae on the northerly side. Okay, that will be the motion. I think we got to wait until Joe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that'll yeah, be it. We'll wait it. for it, and uh, okay. Thank you. You know, should be no problem. All right. Thanks for your time. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us on. Avoid unforced errors. Well, absolutely right. This will be the next time. <laughs> okay. Now we'll open a public hearing. It is even 7:15. The Hadley Planning Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, October 15, 2019, beginning at 7:15 p.m. in the second floor conference room of the Town Hall, Hadley Town Hall. The purpose of the hearing is to review proposed amendments to the Hadley Zone Bylaw and Zone Map. One, amend the Zone Bylaw Section 24 erosion and sediment control for stormwater management by deleting most of this section and referencing the general bylaw erosion and sediment control for stormwater management. This change is intended to provide for compliance with MS4. Number two, amend the zone map by extending the senior housing overlay district to include the assessor's map parcel 5C37, approximately a 9.5 acre parcel on the easterly side of Middle Street. The complete, set, the complete set of amendments, zone bylaw, and zone map may be viewed in the town clerk's office during normal business hours, published twice in the Gazette, September 30 and October 7th. Um, section 24, after talking to town council, um, we're going to amend that article. It probably has already been rewritten. But the original idea was to reference 24 
um, and say we're going to reference the general bylaw. Town Council has said simply you amend section 24 by deleting it in an entirety and it won't reference anything. And you only have the general bylaw on stormwater management. So um, makes sense because we weren't quite sure how to reference it. He said if you don't have anything, reference it. It's all you need. And we already heard us talking to uh, Ken about that. It's it's a very encompassing bylaw and it is complex. There's no doubt about it. Any comments? No, but that's a good suggestion. Simplify things. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, if you can simplify this, we just simplify yeah, it. That's exactly right. Um, so, so we'll just delete section 24. So that's in its entirety. It, that's the way entirety, the, so. the wording on. In fact, I have the min. I have the. I have the article right here, and it'll simply be. It will be presented to see the town will vote to amend section 24 of the zoning bylaw titled Erosion and Sediment Control for Stormwater Management by deleting it in, in its entirety. That is the article. So, um, I'll make a motion to recommend uh, amendment of uh, section 24 by deleting it in its entirety. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0 with one absent. And a second one is by petition to rezone the uh, parcel 5C37, a 9.5 acre parcel, uh, to senior housing. Mr. Reedy, do you Thank care you. to speak to that? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Olson over in Amherst. Um, so, Donald V. on the property owner of 30 Middle Street, has requested a zoning amendment to extend northerly the senior housing overlay district. Um, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the overlay district. It looks like this on your zoning map, just blown up. It ends at the Norwatic Rail Trail on the north. It's bounded on the north by the Norwatic Rail Trail. And so what we're looking to do is to extend it northerly across that Norwatic Rail Trail to the parcel that abuts that rail trail, 5C37. It's about a nine and a half acre parcel. Um, the underlying zoning district is agricultural residential. Um, it is Mr. Dion's petition, but uh, I've got with me Mr. Roberts, who would be the ultimate end user if this is successful at town meeting. Um, we're happy to talk about the project, but we want to be careful understanding that if the zone is changed, the zone is changed. But I will represent that if the zone is changed, Mr. Roberts is committed to doing the project that we would show you. If you have interest, we're happy to do it to show you what we're thinking. Um, we had a neighborhood meeting last week that we got some feedback. Uh, we haven't modified any of the plans since that time, um, but I think the same representation was made. I think we're looking at you know 28 units is probably what's going to end up uh, over there, single family units. Single, sim similar to what's behind Similar the to East office. Street Commons, yeah. Similar to over there. Um, I don't know if Barry, you want to just show it understanding whether it's um, I mean we're happy to do a contract zone here so you know it's not a bait and switch but I think you know Barry well enough that when he says he's going to do something. I, Mike Serzinski I just want to have this disclosure which I've already made with the uh, oh. clerk that I live in East Street Commons now my wife and I moved in about I don't know six seven weeks ago and I filed that disclosure with uh, Jessica at the uh, clerk's office I don't know a year ago so I just wanted to that. Um, so these are just a, a couple of con conceptual options at this point. Trying to be sensitive. Oh, thanks, Barry. Trying to get like the point. That's you can know me already. Uh, I think some of the feedback we got from the neighborhood meeting was pay attention more to those folks along Middle Street, and I think it's something that we had it done to that point. We were paying more attention to the Newton Lane abutters. See, there's a, a berm proposed, and then uh, this is the more linear um, concept, and this is one uh, John Kuhn put together, which has a little bit more. They both the same number of units? Both the same number of units. Okay. Yeah. Um, and otherwise meet the, the bylaw for setbacks and uh, guest parking spaces, number of parking spaces. And the style would be similar to what you see over at East Street Commons. Um, kind of New England architectural 
Now, on New England, on the one on East Street, yes. there is virtually no landscaping yet. Is that going to be going in? Okay. But I've heard a number of people say that it looks very blah. Yeah. And I see well, it's not. And the landscaping and the parking still have to go in. Okay, because I've been telling everybody, and I hope I was right, that there's landscaping to be coming. Oh, yeah. So it'll look very nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just some sketches that uh, John Kuhn had put together. Um, no more than two bedroom, which is in accordance with the bylaw. You know, one of the questions had come up at the neighborhood meeting, why why this site, why not other sites? And so, well, I don't have it on the board. We looked through some of the other potential sites in Hadley, and there really aren't any. Uh, there's the one just north of the senior center, but the economic terms just didn't work for that one. Um, and then almost all the others, there might be two other sites, which I think are below the nine acres. One maybe is close to it, um, but there hasn't been any discussion, uh, any receipted discussion from that landowner, and Barry had reached out, pick a number of, of months ago. And then otherwise, all the other sites are cut by the, the zoning district. And so I think that's one of the issues here is, you know, looking to extend it, you've got a willing seller, a willing buyer, and, and a, a product that uh, I think the, the town needs. You look at your master plan and you see over 55 or senior housing is one of those identified um, needs. Now, realize that if you build this one, if this passes and you do build it, you need to put the affordable units on the site. Sure. Okay. Could do that. And there's even some money in a pot that says you can add some. Oh. Well, don't forget the That's money right. he's donating from the first project. Well, I think we have, have to have yeah. a continuing discussion about that. Yeah. If you put affordable units on the site, how do you, in fact, make the person that wants to buy them able to buy them. Is Hadley going to guarantee, i.e., the mortgage or the note, I should say? I don't know. That, that, that's not up to the Hadley. Okay. That's up to, that would be up to the developer. This, but this, this discussion hasn't gone away. Yeah, and I think part of that issue, just to rehash it a little bit, was the language in the bylaw that required it to be administered by the Hadley Housing Authority, yeah, which is gone. Yeah, they, they, right. they, they won't. Right. Right. And that's the, that's what we ran into the first right. time is when we couldn't yeah. you know, right. get past and, the And that was the issue. Point. But now that that is, everybody's aware of the issue. Yeah. Whoever builds the next one is going to be aware that they will have to administer it by themselves. So it or like, however, the, whatever that means, okay. with, a, in other, with a subcontractor. Would yeah. the Amherst Housing Authority be administering it this thing? They, they could. I know that Barry has a project over on University Drive in Amherst that there are four affordable units there that are rent restricted. So this, I think, yeah. may be a little bit different. They may be rented or they may okay. be on Amherst Housing may want to do it. Um, it's very costly, but it, it's, may, yeah. it, it, it doesn't matter who administers it. The Having a Housing Authority doesn't want any part of it, but as a subcontractor, he's free to use sure. anybody that meets the law. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think we've finished our discussion about whether we would have an affordable housing trust fund that could accept donations. That, that just has kind of been spinning its wheels. Well, I'd like to bring that forward. In conjunction with this, I think. Oh, I no. Mean, if Leverett can do it, smart enough to people, Leverett is smart enough yep. to do it, if Whaley smart enough to do it, I think Hadley's smart enough so to do it. So that's still an open discussion, yeah. but that's yeah. not yeah. for tonight. That's not for tonight, no. right. But you, you raise a good point, Mike, that we need to look at that. Yeah. We'd have to change the bylaw, right? Because oh, yeah, yeah. Shot. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be some rewording done. Yeah. You know, the wording is still in our bylaw right. about the fund, but there's just no way that you. It says. We never the created word, the The wording it says you can create it. But the wording to utilize it has been removed. So the potential, it's, enough said. We're not there. That's not what this is about. Okay, any other question from the board on this? Yes, you said there was a public point, a neighborhood meeting. That was what you said last week? Yeah, last, was it Wednesday, Wednesday night? Last okay. Wednesday night uh, okay. at the Holiday Inn Express in Hadley. We notified uh, abutters within 300 feet, those folks that would be notified under a special permit site plan approval special permit. Um, and most of them, or well, many of them are here this evening, so I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of the same things that we heard last week. Um, but we wanted to try to get ahead of it, understanding that there is going to be opposition. Yeah. Well, because of this petition, we can't vote to say no. It has to go to... No, we can't. No, we we can. can't. Yeah. We, it's a petition article. Because the meeting, the public hearing, is more than 21 days from the town meeting, because they moved it to Feb February, yeah, February, 
November 7th. It is now 22 days, I believe. So the planning board has three choices. They can vote not to recommend, they can vote to recommend, or they could take no stance and say we make no recommendation and just remain neutral. So. We would ask for your recommendation. <laughs> um, so with that said, anybody else on board have any questions? There was a letter that we received that was relevant. There was a letter from a lady that can't make the town meeting on the 24th. I don't know if she will be here on the 7th because they moved the date for the late for the original time she thought the meeting was going to be held. She requested that the article be tabled and be taken up in the spring. That's up to the town, uh, town, meeting. Meeting, town meeting to decide what they want to do with that. And it's not up to us because the select and voted to put it on the warrant. It is on the warrant. We need to address it's on the warrant. So. And she was in a boat. I believe she was. So we don't know if she was at last week's meeting. Or... No. Okay. Yeah. No. Anything else? On the board? People question. Any audience comments? Questions? Yes. I'm Carl Solowski. I live on 34 Metal Street, and uh, this project's going to be in my backyard. And um, I own like an acre and a half that hooks right on the Dion's property. Um, my big concerns are, sure it's been in my backyard for three years, they're going to be building, there's going to be all kinds of noise, all kinds of problems. You, I live on a corner by the pipe path. You've got Newton Lane, all the old agers come out of there in the cars, you've got the bike path. Two, ice, two houses down, these guys want to put a street. Two houses from that, you have Newton Lane, sorry, you had Golden Court, you're going to have their street and then you have Newton Lane. So every two houses we're going to have a street. Now you got 28 units that are going to be built back there. What are we going to do with the traffic with those 28 cars every day that got to come out of there? But to do with Newton Lane that everybody uses as a cut through, the police department, the fire department, I do, everybody does. During the day, at night it ain't bad, but during the day you've got a lot of traffic on that 47. Then we have a farmer. Right in uh, Blight's old place. The guy unloads trailer loads every single day of wheat and right in front where they want to put their row. Friday I had pictures. They had a trailer right in front of that house where they're going to knock down and put this street. They had a trailer backed in the yard and one on his street. Where are we going to go with all this traffic? That's my concern. And the safety of the elderly, the bike path people. Every day we're going to have to deal with this traffic. And that's, to me, that's a concern that you guys got to really look at. Thank you for your time. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Historically, we've been a uh, community of single family homes. And your name, please? And now. Your name. Your oh, name? Sorry. Rolf Goff, 17 Hoop Lane. Okay. And. Uh, now to change the zoning to something that's totally different and uh, change the whole dynamics of the neighborhoods. You know, I mean, that we're talking Middle Street and Newton Lane, and uh, you know, it just doesn't settle uh, right. It's just a too big of a change. I know Don has every right to develop the land. He bought the parcel that he's uh, attached to. His original parcel with the intent to develop it and yeah he can develop it but you know uh, single-family home that's the existing zoning why at this time you know do zoning changes when there still is available uh, APR 55 that would uh, you know meet and you know the needs of the town so you know again you know you've got 13 direct abutters plus a lot of abutters well within the 300 feet that are adamantly against it. I haven't met an abutter yet that says, "Hey, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm okay with this." It just, it's, you know, not no. setting well. I want to make a comment to everybody here that you've got good arguments, but the planning board make a recommendation to town meeting. Town meeting is where you need two thirds majority to pass this on November 7th. So the people that are making the comments tonight, either for or against, whatever it might be, 
that is the place to really voice your concerns to, for the townspeople to hear that, for them to make the informed decision. This is on TV, people are going to hear about it and stuff like that, and that's all well and good. But the, the public hearing comment is really about getting everybody aware of this and getting some publicity out there and other things and the recommendation. But the, the, rubber, that he's, the rubber that meets the road is November 7th. So I just want to make sure everybody aware. Because at another time, people have come to our planning board hearings and voiced all kinds of concerns one way or the other. And when it comes to town meeting, nobody shows up, and a vote passes, and people are like, you know, well, why don't you do something? I said, because it's up, you know, it's not up up to us to make it one way or the other. It's up to the townspeople to make it one way or the other. So just be aware of that. I yes. think that we're all very aware of that fact, but we also want the planning board to take into consideration what our concerns are as well. Um, my name is Suzanne Shea. I live at 32 Middle Street. This is my husband and my son. Um, I'm going to try not to get upset, but some of the things that we wanted to talk about were the fact that Route 47 is the only national scenic byway in Massachusetts. I mean, that says something. Um, the fact that it, it just doesn't sit, like in the 2017 master plan, one of the the things that it talked about was being sensitive to neighborhoods and and like everybody else has said, Mr. Dion has every right in the world to develop his land and you know, he could go right ahead with a subdivision with no approval and it is what it is and I think we're all in agreement on that, but 30 houses basically locked in by one tiny little road doesn't seem like that's what the people of Hadley would want. It just, it's, when there's a piece of land up the street that there was an original agreement on and the profit wasn't going to be high enough, so now they need it to be moved down the street so they can make more money. But I just want people to be aware that there is land available for this within the current overlay and it just isn't going to make them enough money. And there's almost no abutters that it would affect directly next to the brand new senior center that they could walk right over to. So I just want that. Well, because the profit margins are higher 300 feet that way, they want the town to vote in to expand the overlay that I'm sure somebody sat down and put a whole bunch of time and effort and energy into to say, this is where the overlay should be for these reasons. That would be us. Okay, perfect. So congratulations, you did a great job initially. Let's hope we try and keep it that way. Because now they're coming to you asking you to extend that overlay and all that work you did so they can make more money. That's what it all boils down to. Yes, sir. Uh, Dan Rager, 16 Newton Lane. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with what, what Jim's saying, that, that there is existing uh, 55 and over overlay that uh, I, I also will congratulate you with the Golden Court and the Hadley housing that's been working out great. And what what Mr. Roberts had put together over at the East Street Commons, adding more 55 and over housing, fit in there pretty well. Even though, you know, you know, it doesn't make everybody happy. You know, it, it is a good thing. It's close to the new senior center, um, where which you know the, the property he wants to develop is also close, but not as close as the already existing overlay that you guys created that 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 will work great. Jim's point. Yeah, it doesn't make them enough money, and the town should change. We just talked earlier tonight about the MS4 and the amount of drainage that, that this impervious surface. You have rooftops, you have that paved roadway, and all these houses that are crammed together, close together, that don't meet the, your standard bylaw about your, your frontage. If Donald would put in all those houses to the maximum amount of, you know, the minimum amount of frontage allowed per house, it's a lot less than that. It's a lot less impervious surface to deal with this MS4, to all this runoff. That's what really makes sense for for you guys to pay attention to all of that runoff. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to say enough is enough because we need this kind of, of development. We need it somewhere in town, but not on this spot. It could go, it could go where the existing overlay is. You could put seniors, you know, 55 and over housing there. You know, I'm sorry that it doesn't make enough money for somebody. Maybe a different project will. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a contractor, I'm a developer. I like you know, development, but this is making this neighborhood upset. And you know, the, the MS4 is gonna be awful tight. Uh, the, 
the sewer system is already the capacity. You know, we, we've got some other problems and the, the, the fact that you know somebody's not making enough money on a project that isn't even in the right zone. Uh, you know, I, I, I find it hard to believe that this would fit into our master plan. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Lady had a hand up. Yeah. Well, the, my name is Pat Meyer, and my husband Jim Lawson and I own the property next door at 28 Middle Street. Um, at the risk of being redundant, I just want to say that we have um, six objections to concerns about the expansion of the Senior Overlay District to 30 Middle Street. Um, the number of abutters affected by the change, number one, the fact that the current senior overlay district appears to be sufficient to accommodate the proposed project. Number three, as Suzanne mentioned, that 30 Middle Street sits on historic and scenic Route 47, known as the Connecticut River Byway, which is the only national scenic byway in Massachusetts. The master plan, which I've read twice from cover to cover, actually addresses Route 47. Um, states that one objective in maintaining Hadley's rural appearance and small town feel, which is listed as the number one goal in the master plan, would be, and I quote from page 4-10, to ensure that any new development on Route 47 is appropriate for and sensitive to the surrounding neighborhoods and environments. Um, as was mentioned, um, we have concerns about the demands on the town's infrastructure, we have concerns about the additional traffic. And finally, the only way into the property is by raising 30 Middle Street, and this will result in the demolition of a house that is approximately 170 years old. The rich history of Hadley and the agricultural nature and the beautiful vistas make Hadley distinctive. It's exactly why Jim and I moved here two years ago and chose Hadley over Amherst and Northampton. It is because the history and character of Hadley. We're proud to live here, delighted to live here, and we vehemently oppose this project and the zoning. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Just, oh, sorry. Back corner. Barbara and Tom Henderson, Safer Lane. We're the one house on Safer Lane, uh, near Farm Lane. We're actually for it. I think if you live on Middle Street, which is not just zoned residential, am I correct? Ag residential. Middle Street? Is, is ag residential. Ag residential. Um, is that land being farmed? Farmed. Yeah. I believe so. Um, we do have concerns, of course, about you know the, the will the town water and sewer support another project of that size. My question is, how many? If Don Dion sells that and it becomes a development, which is if Barry doesn't go through, it sounds like it will become a residential development. No. You, you could put a residential subdivision in there today by right. Right. Okay. Right. If, if Mr. Roberts, if it's rezoned and Mr. Roberts, the deal falls through with Mr. Roberts, it is still zoned as an overlay district for the senior housing and another developer could come in and put senior housing in there. It is not, we're not, you're not rezoning it for Mr. Roberts. You're rezoning it for senior housing overlay and any developer could put in at their choice, obviously, a residential subdivision, keep it farming, or senior housing overlay. Okay, so I'm, I'm not understanding why it has to be rezoned for senior housing? Because housing? senior housing overlay is a special permit only in the zone, the overlay zone where it is allowed in town. So and if somebody else other than Mary wants to do it and do senior housing, it has to be done the same way it's being done now. I'm not quite sure the what rezone. your question means. If, if, the, if the rezone passes, it is the senior housing overlay right. district. If it doesn't pass. If it doesn't pass, then it stays with the. somebody else wants to do what Barry's doing. They, have, they can come back uh, and they, they, would, they, would, they would need process. to, if, 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 the, if the vote fails on November 7th, right. and somebody else or Mr. Roberts wants to pursue this, they would have to come back to town meeting for the rezone vote again. Right. 
Yes. And if it goes through as regular residential housing, how much? It's, how many it's, houses? it's already that today. You have how many? Eight I think. or nine Prop mansions, uh, uh, like we've seen. Up on you, 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 are, you, you are in a you are in a district that requires forty thousand square foot zoning. So roughly, without doing any fancy numbers, you got nine and a half acres. You could roughly put in nine residential residential homes. Right which could be like what we've seen happen on Huntington Road or North Hadley, like Correct. big, huge could be could, could be big, huge houses. It could be little, small, little, small houses. There's no, you know, it could be whatever the developer decides and the people that buy it want to do. And I think it seems likely that that would happen. So I think the abutters should know. think about that. What, what do they want there? And it does seem like 28, that's a lot, and and what's on East Street? It's it's compact. There's a lot there, so it would be the same kind of thing. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be almost four years of constant construction on a giant project. That right. Anything else? Did you have any other questions? properties. Oh. My husband is saying that um, because it's a condo, because you're paying fees into condos, that um, you've got maintenance going on, you don't have housing going in that wouldn't be maintained, it would be uniform looking, which I think is a plus, and... Kept up to code all the time. Right. Kept up all the time. The lady had a comment in front of you, behind Mr. Sadak. Um, oh, Sadowski. I just wanted to clarify one thing. When the, this information was originally released, and I think the plans were shown, I know it was brought up at the select board and it was in the Gazette, there was um, a number of 80 feet that kept circulating that the closest um, structure was 80 feet from the closest property line. And I just want to make sure that that's clarified, that that's not the case. And I know that Mr. Reedy brought it up that there that was one of the concerns at the neighborhood meeting we had, but the people that live on Middle Street were completely disregarded in that whole plan because there's a house probably 15 feet from my son's swing set in the backyard. So I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that that 80 foot number that has been published is not accurate as of the plans that we see right now. Just to clarify. Thank you. Someone else with a hand? Yes, sir. And I would just say, um, comparing the project over on East Street, to my understanding, and Barry brought this up last week, that about five Hadley residents were bought into that complex. Uh, and I have to ask, what's going on with that? I've heard that uh, this would benefit the citizens of Hadley. Uh, it didn't seem to benefit too many citizens of Hadley uh, on East Street. So I think that has to be part of the plan. It was a plan, but I stand with my neighbor. You know, where else has a project been um, performed where there are so many abutters? In committee, you've seen so many abutters. East Street is one abutter at the most. That's it. But we've got 11 people, 11 families. Uh, they have concerns, grave concerns about this. And I'm sure they will be at the, the town meeting on the south. Them and other people. Anything else? So, yes, ma'am. So there isn't a way to, to say or stipulate that Hadley, people that live in Hadley will buy there. It's illegal. There's no way to do that. It's illegal. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. The only way to do it is to let people in town know this is going to happen, and then. Well, we could make it illegal for people to move to Hadley too, I guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who's living next to you. It could be somebody from Hadley or not from Hadley. So, right now, I think his point is just to the senior senior housing overlay when this was all put into place. The right. mission statement was people from the community. And affordable was a word that was thrown around a lot, and we all know that there's not a home in the East Street Commons that is technically affordable. Um, well, they started like 375, is that right, Barry? 
think well, one sold yeah. in the 300s. Yeah. I think there was one, maybe two sales. Yeah. No, but we're, well, Barry can answer that question. But some of them, were, a lot of them were like in the 450 range, but that's because they added on, they wanted bigger houses, they wanted Right, but that's not what you need to afford. Wanted. That's the people that can afford. Yeah. A four hundred fifty thousand dollar house. That's not necessarily a person that's a senior that's looking to downsize and maybe sell what they own currently and not have a mortgage or you know whatever. So I'm just saying that you know affordable is a loose term that gets thrown around a lot. So if this were a development that that was um, sanctioned more or helped out more by the town of Hadley or do they were talking about hammers or whatever. Just just for your information. Affordability is a state and federal guideline, and there are specific guidelines on what that means. So just because you think it, or I think it's affordable or not affordable, um, you got to look at what the state guidelines are for our area. And it's probably more than some people realize and a lot less than others realize. So I don't even know what the latest numbers are. But that's not the topic of discussion here, to be honest. And if we're talking about affordability, just so we're all clear, I was told that if we push this too hard, then they were going to stuff low-income housing back there. And I said, that's fine. Low-income people have the right to have a house. But that, that was the threat that they used, that if we push too hard back on them, they were going to stuff as much low-income housing back there as they could. They, they, they can't stuff low-income housing Who's back there. Let me explain. Don Dion. Let me, oh. slow, whoa, whoa, slow, slow down, people. Just so you understand, Hadley exceeds the 10% guideline to override zoning for low, for subsidized housing at the present time. No, a, a developer cannot come in under the present guidelines that the state has and force the town to accept low-income housing. That may change in the future depending on what the state does. We don't know that, but right now, only a friendly, what they call 40B, is possible in the town of Hadley. That means that the developer has to come in and meet the, hmm, I guess the right word would be the developer guidelines of the town, and the town has to agree, yes, you can do that. If the town says no, then it can't be done. We've also got quite a few units going to be falling off the affordable rolls over the next five, six years. Five, six, next, next, unless it's, um, I think it's the next 15 years, 15 12 years, 12 years. years. 12 years. Like so is, is things may change in the future, yeah. but right now we're in a decent situation. Yeah. I know that there were some deals done to keep properties that were going to be no longer low income to do some drainage work and stuff like that to keep them in that. We're, we're, the, we're the town is working to do that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so. I just want to stress the whole issue of Route 47. To me, that's one of the major issues in this case. The what? Route 47. Oh, 47. It's okay. also known as the Connecticut River Bike. Yeah, yes. And the fact that it's one byway, all of nine byways in Massachusetts are called scenic byways. But the one that runs through Hadley is the only one that's a national scenic byway. There's certain stipulations on how that happens and how it needs to be maintained. And I just hope we have thoughtful consideration on what happens on Route 47, this project and beyond, that changes the look of Route 47. So I just want to make that point again. But it's an important asset to have it. It's an attraction to have it, it's a tourist. And I hope people think about that if they go through this decision making process. The other point is, yes, Don has the right to do anything to his property. I'm just concerned that Don chose not to advertise the property, <coughs> not to sell it to a small farmer, but to sell it to a developer, whether it be Barry or someone else, whether it's well, uh, senior housing or a complex of larger houses, to put on that property. So, as far as I'm concerned, I watch the, the papers, I watch the ads, multiple listings, and it's all done in back rooms, smoke filled rooms, so I'm concerned. Never advertised. Nothing says he has to, to be honest either. He, he's free, yeah. it's his property, he's free to try to sell it as he can. There's no law that says anybody's got to advertise, so, you know. 
and, and, and that little comment. That's all. I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to defend them. I'm just saying no, that I'm it's, it's a private saying. property. Yeah, not it's like not like stuff, it's uh, not like a town property that says he has to. They have to do such and such. Can't afford them. That's all I have to say. Okay. And it is a right to farm community, as I understand. Correct. Yeah, the cat is a right to farm. If I right want to, to grow farm. wheat on my property, I can. If I want to have a hog farm on my property, I can. So you can. It's right to farm livestock, uh, pro crops. Just water. Um. Yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. If it's if 47 Mill Street is agricultural residential, how come there are businesses along? The business, the, the businesses along Route 47, from the center of from Route 9, yeah. up to the bike path is zoned business. Right. On the north side. On the south side, it's zoned business 300 feet back um, from Route 9. Beyond Route 47 North, from the bike, from the intersection of the wreckish building at the corner just across from the school, all the way to the old North Hadley Garage at Cummins Road, it's zoned limited business for 300 feet back on both sides of the road. That's why there's businesses there. And it used to be zoned a full business zone just like Route 9, but it was changed to limited business, what, 30 years ago? Mm, more recently than that. 25, 20 years ago or so, it was rezoned to limited business so that the businesses, so the same size building that's built on Route 9 couldn't be built along Route 47, but the size is limited to, I think, 25 or 3,000 square feet, 2,500 square feet, something like that. Okay. So it's not just residential? No. no. But beyond the 300 foot line on so each side of the road, it's zoned ag residential. Yeah, from, from the bike path to the elementary school, it is zoned yeah, uh, agricultural residential. The vodka business there. That's on Route 9. No. The one, isn't that? Maybe have the wrong people. The big white cape with the oh. business. Oh, Valley Mall. oh, that's Valley it's Mall. That's Valley. agriculturally okay. exempt. That, that's agriculturally exempt. Oh, okay. 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 There's, I there's, to clear that up. I the the, the state has taken a strange stance. If you are a microbrewery growing malt and stuff like that, then they consider that to be a form of agriculture within reason. Are there, are there businesses on Route 47 up in uh, South Hadley? And they're coming up? There's a couple. There's a couple, right? Yeah, not many. Yeah. You've got the, well, the, you've got the, the uh, condos on, that used to be the, uh, was it not Meadow Inn, what was that? Monarch Inn. That was, uh, people that old enough to remember that, remember some, Sadly, yeah. that was a, it was a, it was a bar. It was a dive. Okay. It was a dive, <laughs> and there was some very, Serious fights and knifings and shootings and went on there, and finally the owner sold out. And the town didn't. I mean, it goes below a little kind of a horror story, but they uh, there was some pretty serious fights that went on in that place. Then they finally sold it. Now it's just now it's just condos and it's a decent place to live. Um, any other comments on this? Hearing none. Planning board entertain a motion. Got a choice to recommend the article to not recommend the article, or to take a neutral stance and make no recommendation. I'll make a motion to recommend the article. Do I hear a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Do I hear another option? I'll make a motion to take a neutral stance on the article. Okay, any second? I'll second that, or that item. Any other discussion on that? So it has been our practice, at least the first time around, on petition articles that we generally have not taken a position on them. We let the property owner and or the developer make their case. Yeah. As long as we're more than 21 days for the public hearing, that we just try to remain neutral on that one. Um, a little bit of history on this, just so everybody understands this, that if the, regardless of what happens at the town meeting coming up, um, the item pretty much can't come back, if it's tabled, 
You know, this table is going to be required to positive vote the next time around, isn't it? No, I don't think so. If it's tabled, so there, we're getting into parliamentary procedure here. But we, we want you to understand this. When we get up to a town meeting, if there is a motion to table this article, made from the floor, and it is seconded, and it gets a majority, uh, majority vote. Uh, it will be tabled, and the tabled article dies at the close of the night, when the meeting closes. Uh, if it is tabled, or if it is withdrawn before a vote, it can be brought back okay. to the next available town meeting. There would be another public hearing, because the next meeting is six months away, and the public hearing has to be within two months of the meeting. Um, if it is defeated, it cannot be brought back for two years unless this board at another scheduled hearing like this like this votes to recommend it at the town board town meeting approval if, if we vote to recommend it it can come back in the spring even if it was defeated in the fall um, whether we would do that or not is an open question, but that's that's the regulatory, that's the statutory framework we're we're dealing with. But I just want you to understand that. So if you people you hear something, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. We want you to understand that some of the I don't call it ramifications, but what some of the other items are contributing to this, depending on what happens at town meeting. That's all. So are you saying we can or cannot vote to take a no stance on we, Because we're more than 21 days of the town meeting, we can vote to take no stance. But to bring it back, if it receives a negative vote at town meeting, requires an affirmative vote at the next public hearing should they decide to bring it back by petition. And if we decide, we can, at that public hearing, we can only vote yes, or if we, t we, only, we can only vote yes to bring it back. If we vote no or make no recommendation, then it can't be on a town warrant. For two, years. for two years. For two years. I would ask, in the history, has the board ever voted negatively? Yes. When's, when's the last time we voted against Oh, I don't know that. To not recommend? I, I, I don't know. Okay. I, I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. So the, the situation sometimes is, usually we don't hold these public hearings until pretty close to the date because as you've seen with uh, what we were doing on MS4, we're always tinkering. We tell the select board to hold a, an article for us, but then we're tinkering with the text right up to the last minute. Um, if this town meeting had not been moved, we would have to take a vote tonight, yes. either for or against it. Because we will be next week, and that's eight days from tonight, or nine days, whatever. Yeah. Less, so, than, less than 21. So, yeah, probably in, in the last 10 years, we probably voted uh, the f once, maybe once a year on some recommendation because we are, we were deprived of the two, of the 21 day option. We deprived ourselves of the 21 day option. When we had the, um, tiny house proposal, we intentionally scheduled that hearing more than 21 days out, so we would not have to take make a recommendation. Now these, these uh, proposed amendments are separate, right? We would make separate, yeah. separate motions this, for each. This is just for the information. The MS4 general bylaw, at least on the latest, uh, what would you call it? Um, agenda I have for the town meeting is Article 15. That's the general bylaw for MS4. The change to zoning or change amend section 24 is Article 16, and the petition article for this um, is actually Article 18, because Article 17 is about the uh, Megan's Way, accepting Megan's Way as a town way. That's not a planning board item. That's a uh, selection item. So we have a motion on, a, on it in front of us to rec make no recommendation on this particular item to town meeting. This item. Second, second article. Right? Motion a second. Yeah. And this is for the senior overlay. overlay yes, we've already voted to recommend 
the MS4. I thought right. so. It, yeah. Eliminating, yeah. eliminating uh, so. Section 24. Right. Which requires a, rec requires a hearing because it is a change to the zoning bylaw. Right. We have motion and a second. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opp any opposed? Nay. Motion passes three, one, and one absent. Like I says, November 7th is important that whether you're for it or against it, there's a meeting to come to and make your case be heard. And one more question, Jimmy. Um, if uh, do you, I don't have a map in front of me, does that 55 and overlay existing, does, does that extend across uh, the south side of Railroad Street and Goff Street as well? No. Is it just uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. The senior housing overlay district runs from the Coolidge runs runs with the business district with the business district. from the Coolidge Bridge to the bike path which on the north side of route 9 it's all the land encompassing the north side of route 9 up to the bike path so as okay. you get down near the bridge it's only this wide right but then as you come closer but yes it does cover railroad street it, it does, does cover railroad, it does street. Cover railroad street. Yeah, street and as you get up to uh well where used to be the bison farm, it, of course, it narrows down again. Yeah, yeah. And on the south side okay, of Route 9, it encompasses most of the land um, from Bay Road to uh, West Street. Once you hit West Street, now it's only 300 feet or 500 feet. You see the three or 500 feet of the south side. I'm not sure at the top of my head. I, I mean, I think that's, that's a lot of 55 and over overlay that is available for development and no matter where you put it you're still if you if, if you're in that zone from what I understand you're you're allowed to put those houses that close together because it's a particular 55 and over overlay so it doesn't you don't have to keep the 150 what's the, what's the frontage minimum frontage 150 feet N not on not on a public street you've got to meet the minimum I think of 50 feet or whatever it might be you can pack those yeah. 55. So, and that doesn't necessarily make it the right thing to do anywhere in town with the MS4 stuff, just because it meets the numbers. Um, you can, yeah, you can drain it. There's a, there's a few, uh, you know, pretty tall retaining walls in town that are built to allow development. And I mean, it makes it drain and it makes it comply with MS4, but putting up a huge retaining wall should give you the hint that maybe that's not a best place for a building. Um, I, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for your information. Thank you for you know, letting us know the, the proper path that we would have to follow. Thank you. Sure. How did you decide to uh, end the overlay at um, Spruce Hill Road? At where? Spruce Hill? Well, the overlay is actually overlaid on the village center overlay district. Okay. So it, it's a it's a double overlay. Right. Um, and the village center was kind of run out by then. Okay. So the village center district ends about. Village center dist village center overlay district is the business district from the bridge to Spruce Hill Road, and that's. That was the bike path. Whatever, okay. Or, yeah, or the bike path. I'm not sure it was the bike path, the Spruce Hill, but it's right around, it's right around that area. They're only a, maybe a quarter mile apart or so. Um, the reason it was decided to do that and not extend it further along Route 9 was that the, the further along Route 9, it's very valuable business land and a lot of taxes. And we get more taxes, and it's just decided because of the businesses along further up on Route 9, that is not the place to put senior housing. Um, and you had, we wanted senior housing because of the density put someplace where they're sewer. And we, we didn't think that it was appropriate to run the senior housing overlay far north on 47 because you're talking wide open farmland. And of course on south on 47, the, the, uh, uh, the sewer doesn't run that far. It only it stops it just before the uh, Fort River Bridge, so there's not a lot of available land there. It's already mostly houses. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have nothing else. I have nothing else.
Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you and thank you, John.